Welcome to the most famous immortal game of all time. It's a game between Adolf Anderson and Lionel Bagration. And this game was a beautiful game, which maybe some of you are aware of, but it's maybe one of the most, if not the most, famous chess game in the history of chess and the 64 squares we see in front of us. So let's dive in with the action. Well, the game started in most romantic fashion with the king's gambit. This move is a move which I favor and if you haven't tried it, you should try it. You're not a true romantic of the board until you've played this move or move 2. After black captured, white now goes bishop c4. And this is quite a modern approach, but it does allow queen h4 check. Displacing the white king. The white king has to move. g3 is not possible because a pawn takes. And now black played a romantic gambit himself. Pawn to b5. Now this is really quite a rare move. Black gives up a pawn in the hope of getting some kind of development in return for it, with maybe a bishop coming to b7, a pawn to c6, some kind of tempo game. I don't really believe this move and indeed it was a famous case of Garry Kasparov being forced to play it in an expedition match which he lost horribly. And afterwards he said, well b5 is just a rubbish move. How dare you force me to play this move. White now captured that pawn and black started to bring his pieces out. Knight to f6. And in this very interesting position, white did the same. Knight to f3. Gaining a tempo on the queen. And in order to play in this romantic style, there's some key things you should remember. One of the most important things is quick development is key. So if you want to become an attacking mastermind, master great player, great attacking player, you've got to just play, you've got to be willing to take risks. You've got to be willing to give up pawns but you've got to look for that quick development. And we can see this is one of the themes that white uses throughout this game. Black's queen is on pre so it moves back to h6. And here I would probably have played a move like knight to c3. I think that's a good move. d3 maybe is not the most accurate but white wants to get his bishop into the game. Trying in some position to take on f4 quickly. Knight to h5 and now it gets very exciting. Black brings his knight to h5 with possibilities of coming into g3 with a check. I'm not sure about this move. I think black should have maybe started to bring his pieces out. Moving the same piece twice in the opening can be a big error. White now played knight to h4. Again I'm not sure about this move but one thing we have to remember is in order to create something immortal it doesn't have to be a perfect or even a very well played game. Being an immortal game such as this it's more about the beauty. There's something underlying and for me perfection is much more beautiful than perfection. If you look at great pieces of art the imperfection is something that humans find much more pleasing to the eye. And the same goes for chess. My favorite chess player Macau Tao was not maybe a perfect chess player. His tactics were often very very imperfect but he did create in my eyes the most beautiful games. That knight wants to come into f5 and it's all about those white knights. Queen g5 just stepping out of the way at that one. And the knight comes into this lovely f5 square. Now around here black should have of course played g6. This is a normal idea. When someone moves a piece into your own half the board try to give it a kick. Black kicked the wrong piece with c6 and now a very interesting move g4. That pawn cannot be taken on pass on because the pin on the pawn. So the knight retreated to f6 and now rook g1 defending this pawn but sacrificing the bishop on b5. Say goodbye to that little bishop. Bye bye. But in order to create pieces of art you have to be brave. Who dares wins. And white's idea was now to play h4 and h5. Gaining time to try and harass the black queen. The queen now comes back to g5 and queen to f3 is white's idea. Bringing another piece slowly into the game. Threatening bishop to f4 trapping the queen. And in some cases allowing pawn to e5 when the queen can gain a very good diagonal. The knight retreats. One of the only ways to give the black queen some squares it can escape to. White brings out his bishop. 
Clearly white has good compensation for the piece with a very nice bishop and a very nice knight. And black's piece is a very badly placed. Queen to f6. White brings out another piece. Watch the rapid development. Knight to c3 aiming to come into d5. Bishop c5 and now around here probably d4 would have been the correct move. But who can resist the next idea? Knight d5 another piece flies in with ideas of attacking the queen with ideas are coming to c7. Queen takes b2 and here we see something quite magical. I mean a normal move here. I mean is there such a thing? Well, there's not really because white has two rooks being attacked and he's also a piece down. So if you start to back out and have fear now, you're only gonna lose. You have to play with absolute caveman style without any sweat dripping down your brow. You have to keep going forwards and white indeed does that, bishop to d6 trying to throw another piece around the black king. Now there are two beautifully placed knights and a bishop attacking. Here black goes wrong, he should have played queen takes a1 and after king e2 not queen takes rook because that would have left really gone to disaster here. Well, hopefully you can see the checkmate, knight takes g7, king d8 only move, bishop c7 checkmate. Very nice. Look at the three pieces free is often when trying to attack but instead blacks should have brought the queen back to b to defending g7 attacking c2. In the game, black got a bit greedy. He played bishop takes g1 and now e5, another fantastic move. This has two main goals. It stops the queen from defending g7 and it opens up the white queen. Black 4, I'm just gonna take everything. Thank you. Queen takes a 1 munch munch munch. There goes another rook but by this stage of the game, white does not give a damn. He's so many pieces down. He's got to go for mate. King e2 and now even though black is a rook and well two rooks and a piece up, he doesn't really have any good way to stop white's threats. There are threats in knight c7, there's threats in knight g7, there's threats to the queen coming in. He tries knight to a6 stopping one threat, but not stopping knight takes g7 check and after king d8, it's too late for black. White now has an amazing way to finish the game and coining this game the immortal, the immortal, and it's the immortal game and it really is coined for good reason. After queen to f6 check, the queen flings itself into the enemy territory. There's only one option, knight takes f6. White only has three very brave troopers left against every single black piece. White hasn't taken one of black's pieces, but bishop e7 delivers checkmate. And what a beautiful position this final position is, the first and maybe the most important of our immortal, immortal games in this new series. If you enjoyed my content then you can like and subscribe to get more videos like this.